You could say I just hyped it out of this product. This is the new Gishelli Labs J2 AKM 4499 DAC with a Sparkos op amp upgrade. And I just did a direct AB comparison. Is Gracie outside? Oh, that must be another dog. With the ever solo with the ever solo DAC Z8, an equally hyped DAC. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about which DAC is better for you. If you are new here, we are getting so close to 200,000 subscribers. And when we do, we're giving away a whole bunch of stuff. Speakers from Morphdale, speakers from SVS, speakers from Q Acoustics, DAX from Gishelli Labs, streamers from Weem, streamers from Cambridge Audio, DAX from Cambridge Audio, turntables from U-Turn, turntables from Project, tube amps from Black Ice Audio, gift cards from Emotiva, a whole bunch of stuff. We're at 198,000 subscribers. Like. 198,800. So there's still time to enter. The only thing that you have to do is fill out the Google form, which I'll link right here. I do this so that I know when I go back in the video where to put the where to where to put the link. Then you have to subscribe, obviously, and follow me on Instagram at Cheap Audio Man. If you're already a subscriber, if you don't have Instagram, it's okay. Still fill it out. You still win. Thank you so much for watching, and please like this video and subscribe. All right, let's go through some differences. The Ever Solo comes with remote control. So in essence, it can be a digital preamp of sorts. Also has a headphone output. So it can be a headphone amplifier of sorts. Functionally, the J2 is just a DAC. It has somewhat of a fixed output. There's three different output settings, but it's not like you're gonna be controlling volume from the J2. Z8 also has Bluetooth if you're so inclined. So the Z8 is gonna win this battle on functionality. Winner. And value if you don't need any analog inputs because if you're just running digitally, then this thing, better value than the J2. How much is it? I don't know. Why? Because I can't find it for sale anywhere. It seems to be out of stock, I think. This was around $700 to $800. And some reviewers actually have compared this to really high-end DAX. So this is a great value at whatever mystery price it's sold at. Let's talk about connectivity. Eversolo DAC Z8 has balanced outputs. It has single-ended RCA output right here, which is what I was doing my testing with. Single-ended right here. All right, over here you have single Toslink optical, single coaxial. Over here you have a full size USB and then you have USB-C. And then right here, this is just for firmware updates, I think. And then uh, master power toggle, linear power supply inside. The J2, you have balanced outputs right here, single ended RCA outputs. One optical Toslink right here on the back, one digital coaxial right there one traditional size USB. However, whoop, on the front, you have another optical and another coaxial. Two USBs on the Z8, two coaxials, two opticals on the Gishelli Labs. Pretty much a draw, unless you need two USB. Like maybe you have a computer and then you have a, uh, I don't know, Raspberry Pi or something like that, or shit erd. I guess we'll give it to the Eversolo Z8. Winner. So two wins here for the Eversolo Z8. Let's talk about hardware inside. If you want to know more about the Shelly Labs J2, I just did a video about it. I will link it right here. The takeaway is this, this, oh my goodness, I'm blinding you, I'm blinding you. The takeaway is the Shelly Labs J2 has a new 4499 AKM 4499SE chipset, which needs the AKM4491. So there's two chips inside here. The Eversolo comes with the ESS Sabre flagship 9038 Pro. XMOS sensor, all the good stuff. OPA8, OPA1612, which are op amps, TI op amps. Eight OPA1612 op amps. Does all the stuff, okay? Great measuring DAC. 
all the good stuff. MQ MQ Jeepers, man. My chair, you hear this? My chair is terrible. I just slowly sink down with this chair. I hate it. I hate this chair. Okay. Z8 has all the stuff. Flagship 9038. J2, fundamentally flagship AKM. Op amps in here are whatever you want them to be. Basically, I have the Sparkos op amps installed in here, but it comes stock with some Texas instruments and you can also get Burson. Op you can get whatever op amps you want. So this has socketed op amps in the board. So you can change out the Sonics by changing the op amps because this is a current based type of DAC. Apparently voltage based DACs, you can't change the Sonics as much with op amp changes as you can with current based DACs. Anyway. As a current bass stack. So, if you want to play around with the Sonics, you certainly can. Not so on the Ever Solo. Nope. Because you get what you get. Now, this thing still sounds spectacular, wonderful, awesome, but you don't have the versatility. So, we'll say DAC chip hardware is a draw, but we're also going to give a win to the J2 because it has more versatility when it comes to the hardware. Winner! Let's talk about price. Fully kitted out J2 comes in around $766. I think the Z8 used to come in around $800. So similar. However, you don't have to spec this out all the way. I was using the single-ended RCA outputs. If you don't have balanced gear, then you can save $158 by not specking out the Sparkos op amps basically for your balance connections. If you ever want to use balance, you can always come back and... I'll buy the Sparkos and add them. So that would drop the price with a wood case down to $608. Now you can save even more if you don't need a USB. Now the price comes down to $558. So depending upon what you need, you can spec it out how you want. So from a price standpoint, it's kind of apples and oranges because the Z8 has so much other functionality, remote control, volume control, volume control, things like that. But if you're looking at this from a pure DAC play and you already have volume control throughout the rest of your system, then the price win is going to the J2. Winner. Let's talk about how they sound. How they sound, I was listening to this in my living room, going to the RMC1L surround sound processor from Emotiva. Going out into an Emotiva XPN Gen 3, I have a multi-channel amplifier, but the front two channels are run off of mono modules, so it's really good amplification. Going into the Bucard P300, spoiler alert, pretty awesome speaker. Anyway, I was using two Weems linked, and the output levels seemed to be the same, so I had fixed output levels. I was controlling volume, well, through the through the RMC1L running reference stereo mode on both of the analog inputs. I was in a bit of a cowbell mood. You're gonna want that cowbell. That's not a very, not a very good Christopher Walken impression. Anyway, cowbell. A bunch of songs with cowbell. Starting off with Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. That's right, there's a lot of cowbell in <laughs> Dr. Feelgood. It's coming from the left speaker. Tommy Lee hammering on the cowbell. So it's very firmly placed to the left and behind Vince Neil. And in my room, when I was listening to the J2, it seemed like it was behind the back wall with the J2. Not so with the DAC Z8 from Eversolo. More of a flatter presentation. The Z8 had crispier guitars, but they felt like they were a little bit more forward than the J2, almost kind of in your face. So, there's a little bit of upper mid-range forwardness with the Eversolo Z8. Harsher vocals. I have written down, Harry's gonna be doing okay. I think that's part of the song. Take away vocals, a little bit more forward. I think on that song, soundstage imaging, um, three-dimensionality, it's gonna go to the J2. So the J2 wins the Dr. Feelgood battle. Winner. You're gonna want more cowbell. Still not as good. Still not very good. You're gonna want, you're gonna want that cowbell. Still not good. All right, Don't Fear the Reaper, Blue Oyster Cult. Another song which features 
the cowbell. Uh, guitars out of the left seemed way more ethereal and hung out more on the J2. Z8 had a lot more punch and seemingly, seemingly a little bit more dynamics, but it was at the expense of bass cleanliness. 44.99 also had a vocalist in space a little bit more definitively and a little bit better separation amongst instruments, okay? Next song, more cowbell. Still not good. Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. All of this comes off of my Angry Old Man sound, soundtrack. Nope, not soundtrack. It's a playlist, Angry Old Man. It's, it's a fun playlist. So on Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. Now you're messing with a, a son of that song. Anyway, the cowbell actually travels. It kind of is in the back and it kind of floats between the right and the left speaker. It's kind of a trip. I never noticed that before. It doesn't go beyond the speakers, it's between two speakers. It's very subtle though. Z8, combo less crisp and transparent than the 4499. And at the two minute mark, Z8 had a little bit more edge to it. What is the two minute mark? Hold on. A lot of cowbell. <laughs> All right, two minute mark. What is it? What are they doing? Oh, okay. So it's when he's doing the guitar thing. That needs to be in more songs. Anyway, I have written down the Z8 had a little bit more edge, a little bit more definition on the bow, 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 that part. So I got here, it's a draw. So the J2, the Z8, draw. Winner on Hair of the Dog by Nazareth. Fortunate Son, Creedence Clearwater Revival. One of the things that surprised me the most is just how terrible that recording is. Actually, most of these recordings are pretty terrible, with the exception of Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Dr. Feelgood, well recorded. Who would have thunk? This started off immediately. So there's four guitar repeats. Dernier, 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 Dernier. And the fourth one comes way forward. And on the Z8, it was actually uncomfortable came forward on the j2 as well but it wasn't so in your face again little upper mid-range forwardness or in this case a lot of upper mid-range forwardness with the z8 now if that's your jam then obviously the z8 is the way to go and on this track the z8 actually had a bit more cleanliness around the vocals but again it was harsher and more forward Terrible recording I have written down here. So the win is going to the Z8 on Fortunate Son. Winner. All right, now we got away from, actually Fortunate Son, I don't think any cowbell. Um, Highway Star, Deep Purple. Starting at the 27 mark, 27 second mark, uh, the guttural scream from the right speaker was like it was sucked from the room behind me and went into the right speaker with the 44.99. On the Z8, flatter, still a, still sound stagey with the Z8, but not nearly as much. So the wind's gonna go to the J2 purely on three dimensionality. Winner! Two minute mark, there's a bridge keyboard solo and guitar solo, and I just wanted to sit back and listen to it, so I switched back to the J2 because I thought the J2 was better on that part. Okay, deep purple. I always start. Win, 44.99. So what are my final thoughts? Final thoughts. I, I read some comments from my J2 video, the individual video. And I probably should have stayed out of them because it seemed like with the title that I used, some people got a little bit butt hurt about it or defensive about it because, well, I said that the J2 is the best deck uh, or that destroyed high-end audio. I think it does. The Eversolo Z8 was propped up as being punching way above its weight class from a price perspective. I think that price is around $800. I think the J2 is better in most situations with most recordings. I think it's better. It doesn't have the functionality though. So let's talk about which one is right for you. Depends on your use case scenario. Personally, I like a DAC that has a fixed output. I generally like to control volume from my preamp or my surround processor. Most of my favorite DACs have fix, fixed outputs. So the Denifreps Aries 2, all the Gishelli Lab stuff, the Schkit stuff, the Modi, 
Is it Modi? Yeah, Modi. Bifrost, all that stuff, fixed output. I will say though, that I think the Z8 from Eversolo is really, really, really good, which should give you some perspective on just how good the J2 is. And depending upon how you're running it, you can save a significant amount of money over or under the Z8, if you can actually buy the Z8. But none of that may matter if you need volume control from your DAC. Ultimately, I think they're both great DACs, and I think they both provide fairly good value or exceptional value at their respective price points. Which one is right for you is gonna depend upon your use case scenario. I think sonically though, especially with three dimensionality with the Sparkos op amps is better is better in pretty much every regard than the Z8, with exception that there's gonna be a few tracks where the Z8 sounds better. But for me, I'm taking the J2 with the Sparkos. Winner!